아, 그, 그 MS 빌더 애프터 파티 지금 어, 첫 번째 시간이거든요. 저희 파워 플랫폼은 여섯 번이 준비되어 있습니다. 그래서 이게 예전하고 코로나 때하고 조금 달라져서 예전에는 코로나 때는 세션이 30분짜리였거든요. 근데 지금은 그한 50분 내지 1시간짜리로 45분 녹화인데 그한 50분 내지 1시간 다 하려 하시더라고요. 그래서 다음 세션들 보면 은이 정도 길이기 때문에 꽤 길거든요. 그래서 코로나 때 우리가 이 애프터 파티 했을 때처럼 제가 조금 설명을 많이 하면 은 이게 2시간 걸릴 수도 있기 때문에 2시간, 3시간 막 걸릴 수도 있기 때문에 그래서 영상 위주로 좀 보시고 지금 이제 연필이라든가 뭐 이런 거 지금 이제 어, 녹화 틀어 놓았을 때는 카메라 끄시고 그냥 이제 좀 편하게 들으시면 될것 같아요. 그러면서 아 처음 들어본 거 아니면 내가 궁금한 것들 위주로 잘 이제 어, 노트에 적으셨다가 끝나고 나서 어, 좀 대화를 하는 시간을 좀 가졌으면 좋겠습니다. 그래서 이제 앞으로 여섯 번이 이제 준비되어 있지만 여러분들 이제 그 하실 때 어, 뭐, 뭐 별로 준비하실 건 없을 것 같아요. 여러분들 그냥 좀 편하게 영상 이제 보시고 그 다음에 내가 궁금한 게 있으면 은 그걸 좀 물어본다 이런 개념으로 접근을 하시면 좋을 것 같아요. 그래서 저도 이거 지금 어, 빌더 영상은 한 15개, 20개 정도를 받고 그 전에 이제 MPP 서비스는 한 90개 내지 100개 정도를 본것 같거든요. 그래서 이제 그 우리 그 MPP들 어, 기밀 유지 계약이 있거든요. 그거에 어긋나지 않는 내용들은 이제 여러분들 질문하면 가르쳐 드리고 아니면 제가 말을 못하는 거는 거기 아직 그 말을 하면 안 되는 것들 내용들이 있어서 거기 발표가 나면 제가 말을 할수 있는데 아직 그 발표가 안난 것들이 있거든요. 그래서 궁금한 거 있었으면 정리 잘해서 서로 대화를 했으면 좋겠습니다. 그래서 어, 그것도 영상을 바로 보면 은 힘드니까 제가 일단은 어, 내용을 그 기, 여기 피, 뭐고 PPT를 조금 이렇게 그 정리한 게 있거든요. 그래서 이걸 잠깐 이제 보시면서 어뭐 어떤 내용이 이제 비디오에서 나올 거라는 거 그거 이제 생각하시면서 보시면 될것 같아요. 그래서 자 이거부터 한번 보여드릴게요. 그래서 이제 파워 플랫폼 이제 다섯 개 있는 거다 아시겠고요. 그 다음에 뭐요 파워 플랫폼이랑 요 데이터버스 AI 빌더 요 파워 FX 이런 것들이 이제 파워 플랫폼을 강력하게 해주는데 요 다음 우리 그 나머지 세션 나머지 그 애프터 파티 세션에서도 이런 것들을 좀더 상세하게 설명할 거예요. 그리고 이번에 보니까 데모가 되게 많아요. 그래서 여러분들 좀 편하게 오셔가지고 아 이렇게 흘러가는 거구나 정도를 아시고 나중에 이게 끝나고 애프터 파티 끝나고 오프라인에서 행사할 거예요. 그때 핸즈 같이 하시면 좀 도움 되실 것 같아요. 그래서 이렇게 많이 사용하고 있다. 뭐 그다음 에 이런 툴들 같이 하, 활용하면 좋다. 그다음에 지금 로코더가 한 25% 정도 이제 어, 이, 아니 25% 정도에서 지금 이런 걸 해서 만들었는데 앞으로 한 75%까지 갈것 같다 몇년 내에 그 다음에 코파일럿이 나왔으니까 코파일럿 잘 사용하자 뭐 이런 내용이고요 그 다음에 이제 영상들 보시면 이제 데모 영상들이 네 개로 나오거든요 이걸 좀 찬찬히 잘 보시면 될것 같아요 처음에 이제 파워앱스 코파일럿 나오고요 그래서 요로, 요게 이제 기본 형식이에요 근데 제가 어제 이렇게 딱 뜨더라고요. 그 전까지는 이 내용만 떴었는데 이거 없었거든요. 이거 떴는데 지금 영상에서 보여주는 엑셀 파일 올리는 그거는 아직은 얘들이 안 내준 것 같아요. 아쉬워요. 요, 요 부분이 아직은 없어요. 그리고 그 다음에 뭐 여기 요 코파일러 파워 앱스 안에 코파일러도 넣을 수 있다는 거 그거 좀잘 보시면 좋을 것 같고 그래서 이제 두 번째 이제 그 데모를 하시는 분이 이제 CICD라든가 이런 코드 이제 어 개발자를 위한 얘기를 조금 하셔요. 그래서 하, 어렵죠. 그 개발자 이런 것들은 개발자들이 하는데 둘이 이제 잘 엄쳐서 해라. 그래서 잘 이제 그 전문 개발자하고 시민 개발자가 힘을 합치면은 로켓 달듯이 이제 헐헐 날아갈 수 있다. 뭐 이런데 제가 볼때 여기 로코드 부분 있죠. 로코드 부분이 요즘 이제 AI를 통해서 좀 확장돼 가지고 시민 개발자가 할수 있는 것들이 되게 많이 있는 것 같아요. 그래서 여기 어 2021년도, 22년도 여기 이제 코로나 때잖아요. 이게 끝나면서 어, 코파일러 작년 11월 30일 날 이제 채 GPT 나오면서 엄청 지금 요 파워 플랫폼 안에 코파일러 넣고 있거든요. 아 이렇게 많이 들어왔다는 거. 그래서 이제 
요게 이제 그 3월 16일 날까지 나왔던 게 앱스 오토메이터 이제 체포까지가 곧 발레 들어갔고 이번 행사 때 BI하고 페이지가 지금 코팔럿이 들어갔어요. 그래서 이제 어, 파워페이지 코팔럿에 대해서 조금 더 상세하게 설명을 해주시는 것 같아요. 여기 파워페이지 안에 들어가면 은 여기 코팔럿이 여기 붙어 있는데 이게 지금 한국 버전, 아시아 버전 안 돼요. 미국 버전이어야 되는데 지금 미국 버전이 그 미국 환경이 그 저기 뭐냐 미국 환경이랑 미국 미리 보기가 있는데 아 이게 이제 미국 보기인데 이게 안 되더라고요. 미국 미리 보기에 있는데 미국 미리 보기는 또 이게 데이터버스가 설치가 안 되는 버전이라 가지고 아직 안 뜨고 있는데 좀 기다리시면 되지 않을까 싶습니다. 그래서 요거는 옛날에 그 M365 코팔러 보셨을 때본그 창이랑 똑같죠. 요 코팔러 창인데 여기 이제 뭐 문장 집어넣거나 뭐 이런 거 이제 단락 이런 거 이제 그 어, 스타일 지정할 때 여기 코파일러 여기 버튼이 있어요. 요거 누르면 이렇게 뜨는데 이게 이제 M365에서 봤던 거랑 똑같아요. 그게 이제 뭐글 만들고 글 줄이고 뭐 이런 여러 가지 이런 거 하는 것들이 지금 파워페이지에 들어와 있는 거고요. 여기 보이시죠? 자, 또 이제 양식 만드는 것도 요, 요게 아예 만들어져 있거든요. 그래서 요 다음 영상들은 이제 요런 이제 파워페이지 안에 이제 오팔러들이 다 들어가 있다는 걸 이제 그냥 보여주는 거예요. 그래서 오토메이터도 들어가 있고, 데스크탑에도 들어가 있고, 파워페이지도 들어가 있고, 데이터볼스도 들어가 있고, 이제 그 체포, 파워볼츄얼 에이전트도 되는데, 파워볼츄얼 에이전트에 대해서 설명이 조금 더 많이 해주셔요. 왜 그러냐 하면은, 지금 이제 기존에 들어와 있던 게 Generative Ends라고 해서요. 여기다가 어, 여기 화면에 엔터 유어 웹사이트에다가 주소만, 웹 주소만 집어넣으면 챗봇이 만들어졌어요. 근데 얼마 전까지만 해도 웹 주소만 됐는데 지금 보면 쉐어포인트하고 원드라이브 있는 내용도 추가해서 챗봇을 만들 수 있거든요. 진짜 아무것도 안 하고 주소만 집어넣으면 챗봇이 만들어져요. 근데 이제 그보다 더 중요한 것은, 제넬, 아, 요건 이제 제네티브 엔스, 이제 HP에 대한 얘기고, 중요한 거는 제네티브 액션이 들어왔다는 거예요. 이게 이제 보통 이제 책봇에서 옛날부터 사람들이 꿈에 그리던 기술, 스킬, 뭐, 이름, 플러그인, 이런 이름으로 이제 얘기됐던 것들이 이게 들어와요. 이, 이게 되면은 이제 책보 뭐, 묻고 답하고 이런 게 아니고 내가 어떤 지시를 하면은 얘가 이제 행동을 할수 있는, 그리고 행동할 때 뭔가 변수 이런 것들이 빠지면 얘가 알려주는 이런 기능들을 하는 거거든요. 그래서 이게 좀 달라졌어요. 그 여기 보면은 옛날에 어부기 밑에 얘기가 토픽이었는데 플러그인이라는 이름으로 바뀌었어요. 그러면서 여기 플러그인에 보면 커스텀 토픽하고 시스템 토픽이 있는데 요 보면 커넥터 플러스 스킬 요런 것들이 들어가 있어요. 요런 것들이 이제 실제로 행동하고 이제 지시하는 것들이라고 보시면 돼요. 그래서 그 내용을 이제 데모 마지막에서 보여줄 거예요. 그걸 잘 보시면 좀 도움 되실 것 같고요. 그래서 어, 요런 것들이 나왔으니까 열심히 위기에 어, 아카점 ms. 점 아, 슬러시 로코도 얘기 들어가서 열심히 공부하시라 뭐 이런 얘기를 할 생각고요. 그다음 세션들 이렇게 많아요. 요것들을 이제 우리가 앞으로 다섯 개 남은 세션에서 해볼 거고요. 그 나머지 일쭉 많은데 뭐다 보면 좋지만 다 보기 어렵잖아요. 그래서 이제 중간 중간에 세션 할때 제가 발표하시는 분들 외에도 약간씩 내용을 더 추가해 드릴 거고 나중에 이거에 대한 전반적인 내용들에 관계된 실습을 다음에 오프라인에서 한번 해볼까 생각하고 있습니다. 그래서 아직 다안 나왔다는 거예요. 나온 것도 있고 안 나온 것도 있으니까 기다려 달라 뭐 이런 얘기인 거고요. 그래서 마지막에 이제 Q&A 이제 할 거고 그리고 또 파워 플랫폼 관련돼 가지고 큰 행사가 10월 초에 있거든요. 미국 가실 분 계신가요? 아, 저도 가고 싶은데 돈을 못 벌어서 아직 못 가겠습니다. 그래서 이렇게 하면 이제 다 끝나요. 그래서 지금부터 이제 영상을 어, 틀어드릴 테니까 편안하게 영상을 보시면 되시겠습니다. 지금부터 틀어드, 틀어드리겠습니다. 그러니까 지금 여러분들 거기 볼펜, 연필 잘 들고 내가 이거 처음 들어본다, 이거 궁금하다, 뭐 이런 것들 있잖아요. 그러니까 뭐 내용에 대해서 깊게 물어보려고 하면 오늘 처음 보니까 그런 거 이제 물어볼 수 없으니까 뭔가 신기하다 싶은 것들, 이해 잘안 간다, 데모 영상이 이런 것들 위주로 나중에 물어주시면 감사할 것 같은데. 근데 두 번째 데모 영상은 개발자용이라 가지고 그걸 데모 영상 두 번째 걸 질문하시면 좀 답을 하기가 저도 고건 테스트를 못 해봤기 때문에 어려울 수도 있으니까 그건 그냥 봐주시고 재밌게 들어봐 주시게 됩니다. 여기 50분짜리거든요. 지금 9시까지 하기 때문에 저도 제 얼굴 계속 더 있으면 여러분들 부담스러우니까 저도 카메라를 끄고 마이크를 꺼놓고 
영상을 계속 틀어드릴 거니까 번역은 제가 열심히 해서 나름 깔끔해요. 디베일에다가 제 노력도 약간 더 추가해서 번역한 거라서 쭉 보시면은 일반 그 얘들 그 저기 뭐고 마이크로소프트 빌더에서 나온 그 영상의 번역보다 훨씬 더 좋을 거예요. 다음에 보실 때도 이걸로 만약에 보신다면 제 영상으로 보시는 게 훨씬 더, 좋, 더 좋다고 생각합니다. 그럼 지금부터 영상 틀어드릴게요. 안녕하세요. Power BI for analytics and reporting and visualization of your data. Power Apps for web and mobile application development. Power Automate for workflow and robotic process automation. Power Virtual Agent for chatbots and conversational experiences. And Power Pages for business websites. All of these have great visual experiences and low code, no ways to build your solution. But also, it doesn't mean no code. You can drop in and write JavaScript and TypeScript and more as you need to to go build out your solution. And this is a really important thing that we talked about a lot at Build this year, is that developers are welcome in the Power Platform. No matter where you come from, from a data platform background or an app dev background or an AI background, you can use a Power Platform to create amazing solutions. If we look at Dataverse, which is the low-code data platform built into the Power Platform, it's easy to store and manage your relational data, your structured data, your unstructured data, and expose it inside of Power Apps, Power BI, and more. We also have AI Builder, which is a low-code way to mix in AI capabilities and AI models right into the solutions that you built. So all that great stuff that you've seen from Azure Machine Learning and Azure Cognitive Services, it's exposed in a low-code way inside the Power Platform. There's also PowerFX, so a really easy to use, low-code expression language, much like Excel, to do logic and calculations and mathematics, which you can use before you jump all the way into writing code. So all of this combines to an incredibly powerful set of functionality, which helps developers build amazing solutions. Uh, and one of the great things about doing this in person again is I can ask this question and say, who here has used the Power Platform before? You could raise your hand. Awesome. Yeah, for the record, for folks watching, just about everybody raised their hand. Uh, so I'd say what's amazing about that is just how many developers and how many people are using the Power Platform to create amazing solutions. Just last month, we shared for the first time that there's over 33 million monthly active users in the Power Platform. Developers just like all of you. It's a huge set of creators, of builders, who are using these tools as well as with their developer capabilities and skills to create amazing solutions. And this is across hundreds of thousands of organizations in just about every country and just about every industry. And the stat I like most when I'm at Build is that 25% of the makers and builders in the Power Platform are professional developers. That's people who are building custom visuals, custom controls, calling Azure API services, registering their backend systems. They're using pro dev capabilities inside the Power Platform. They use Power Platform to be better developers, more efficient developers. And that's something that we're really excited about and we've been talking about for a few years and it's really reached mainstream, this idea of the Power Platform extending your developer potential. And we use that word extend very deliberately. Because it's not replacing other dev skills that you all have. It's just making you able to do more with the developer capabilities and investments you've already made. So just like that, you can easily use low-code capabilities to go build things faster. And if we go look at that full tool chain, what that modern dev tool chain really looks like, it's a whole bunch of services coming together. You have GitHub for source control and CI, CD. Azure to host your code and your services and your backend data platforms, Visual Studio for your IDE, and extended with the Power Platform to build solutions. All four of these come together. 
to move faster, to be more efficient, to create amazing solutions. And when we really think about what all of this translates to for our customers, it means that sometimes you use Power Platform, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you use Azure, sometimes you don't. You use the right tool for the job. And what this has meant is a very rapid transformation in how enterprise app development is done. We are sitting at the midpoint of the low code shift, the low code revolution. By 2026, 75% of enterprise app development will be done with low code tools like the Power Platform. That's up from just under 25% a few years ago. So from a small minority to the super majority of solutions being built with these low code tools. And this transition is happening at an incredible pace and speed. I remember 10 years ago when I worked in Azure, the pace of moving to the cloud, that has been a long journey to flip the majority of app dev to the cloud. The low code shift is gonna happen in five, six years. And we're right in the middle of it. And what's great today is we're gonna see how AI and dev capabilities can make the Power Platform more productive. But even more exciting, we're gonna have four live demos showing all these new announcements that we had at Build in action. So a lot of great capabilities to go stretch your time and make you more efficient. And of course, it wouldn't be Build 2023 without talking about a co-pilot. So you'll forgive me, but low code also has a co-pilot. So just like you saw for GitHub Copilot or Microsoft 365 Copilot, there's the same set of AI-powered developer augmentation capabilities right inside the Power Platform. So you can very easily use AI to create new content, to perfect your design and experience, to transform the overall flow inside of an application, or even start to automate tasks. All of that is possible with Copilot, and it makes it so that if you mix and match with the low-code visual designing and some other code aspects, you can build amazing solutions faster than ever before. And that's something you'll hear over and over again over the next 35 minutes or so, speed, agility, rapid development. And that's what gets us really excited because by being faster, we spend less time doing the mundane, boring parts of the job. We let the AI take care of that. We let the visual designer take care of that. We let the data connectors take care of that spend more time on the exciting parts of what it means to be a developer. So for the first demo, we're gonna be looking at Power Apps Copilot. Back in March, we announced the first version of Power Apps Copilot, which made it so you could use natural language to design data schema inside of Dataverse and start to create an entire working application with multiple screens over that data source. We've now continued to extend and enrich that Copilot, so now you can have an AI-assisted experience to go from an existing data set, like an Excel file, directly into a working Power App. And I think I can speak for all developers everywhere. You have a slight nightmare when someone comes to you and says, here's an Excel spreadsheet, convert this into an app. Instead of having to go recreate it, you can have Copilot and AI help you. So to show that in action, I'm gonna invite Sherry onto the stage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'd say Sherry is a engineering manager on Power App, so not only is she going to demo it, she's also helped build all of this. So uh, take it away, Sherry. Thank you, Charles. Hello, everybody. I'm sure some of you out here have created Excel spreadsheets to track something. And over time, this file has gotten bigger and bigger. And before you know it, your team or your company would fall apart if anything happened to that file. Well, being the amazing developers that you are, I am sure that you wish you could manage it better by turning it into an app and a database. Well, today I'm here to show you how with the power of Copilot and low code, power apps can make your dreams a reality. I have a spreadsheet here used by a bank to track customer support tickets. Let's go turn this into an app. I start in the Power Apps Maker Portal, where there is a clear and simple experience to get started. I choose Start with Data. And I go ahead and upload my Excel file. While this is happening, Copilot is analyzing the file 
and using AI to de determine a Dataverse table schema that best matches the data in the file. Dataverse is the low-code solution included with the Power Platform. Now, this is, oh, it's done. Um, so Copilot is done, so I can go ahead and make changes if I would like. So I'm not a fan of the table name, so I'm just going to go ahead and modify that. I can also update the columns, but I'm just going to go ahead and do this and create the app. Now, this takes a minute or so, so I'm just going to jump to an app that I have already uh, pre-created. Copilot used that Dataverse table schema we created earlier to generate this app. The app is connected to data. It is beautiful. And it is responsive. It is way better than anything I could have done in this short amount of time. In fact, I would still be choosing which JavaScript framework to use at this very moment. So this app allows me to manage individual tickets. But I actually need to ask questions about the data to understand patterns. So PowerApps has an answer for you, too. We can drop a copilot into the app. We can connect it. I can connect it then to the Dataverse table I just created. And my app is now intelligent. The intelligence is backed by Dataverse's enterprise-grade security and privacy. This is one less thing for me to worry about. Let's give Copilot a try. I can simply ask it, what categories of tickets are unresolved? Copilot is able to understand me, and its answers will help me find out which of my departments need more help in resolving customer complaints. Now, I just showed you how with the power of Copilot and low code, I was able to transform my Excel-based app into a beautiful, connected, and intelligent app in the matter of minutes. You can too. Back to you, Charles. Thank you. And every time I see that demo, I see something new that gets me super excited. So Copilot helping guide you through building an app, the ability to have responsive designs in Canvas apps. I think that's probably the most upvoted Power Apps idea. And, and then the ability to have Copilot right inside of that very app that you built. But one of the things the demo shows, which is a little more subtle, is just how easy it is to connect the Power Platform to your existing data estate. In the Power Platform, we have over 1,000 data connectors to Salesforce, to SAP, to Oracle databases, even to AS400 system. All of it can be connected inside of the Power Platform. That makes it easy to build a solution without having to spend your time integrating and moving and configuring and securing data. You can very easily get started. And this is one of the things that I hear from developers who use the Power Platform as a big plus, is the fact that you don't have to worry about your existing IT estate. And it's this idea of instead of being worried about a brownfield environment, you can have greenfield development speed. So a lot of great things there. Now, in addition to all of that amazing co-pilot and visual design experience, there's also a lot of capabilities in the Power Platform for coders. You can easily go configure things like CI, CD using GitHub, so you can follow your standard software development lifecycle. That means deploying to pre-production, user acceptance testing, automation testing, and more. Additionally, you can always escape the low-code environment and write code as needed. You want a custom controller or custom visual using React and TypeScript? You can do that and register it in the Power Platform. Or if you want to go connect to a microservice running in a Kubernetes cluster hosted in Azure, you can do that too. And that ability to go from low code to pro code is why developers can reach for Power Platform first and then fall back and use code as needed. The third piece is really this idea that you can always find ways to extend and around the Power Platform, whether that's inside of other Azure services or inside of Office and Microsoft 365 services. Like, for example, you can integrate Power Platform connectors in Microsoft 365 Copilot, even the custom connectors you built. And last but not least, although you're using a low-code environment, you don't have to compromise when it comes to native 
app capabilities. So things like QR code scanning, camera, GPS, and more, you can use all of that inside the Power Platform. So a lot of great capabilities out there for coders that want to start and use low code as part of the developer tool chain. And for all of this, seeing is believing. I know developers are a skeptical group, so we want to make sure that in this next demo, we're going to walk through a bunch of these great capabilities to really show you how you can use those pro dev and code first approaches in the Power Platform. So I'm going to invite Karthik on the stage, who's going to run through all this great capabilities and show a modern dev tool chain on the Power Platform. Thank Take you, Charles. Away, Hey, everyone. All right. So uh, we're going to go right into it, right? So here we are right in our GitHub environment. All right. And this is our favorite page here, which is, you know, everything, everything's there. Now, what we're going to do is, just like any other DevOps manager, I'm going to go ahead and create a release. OK? And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to go ahead and click on releases. All right? And I've gone ahead and initiated a bunch of things right before I got on stage. So sorry. <laughs> All right, but what's actually happening here is I've got actions, and while creating this release, it's in the process of taking that low-code application that was that Sherry just built from you from Excel and persisting that directly into my Git repository. Okay, so let's look into that a little bit more deeper. Um, I'll go back into my code view, and what I'm going to do now is move over to a new tab, which has got my code space set up. And code space is obviously uh, an IDE, a full-blown IDE that is built on top of the, Git, uh, the GitHub file system, or the GitHub repository in this case. Now, within that, as you can see, I'm launching up everything else. Now, while that's launching up, let's go ahead and look at exactly what our workflow does here. So here I've got my workflow set up. And again, I have two things that are actually happening. And these are, again, YAML files, all right? And what you have here is essentially tasks. So we have native tasks available within GitHub to go ahead and extract artifacts from Power Platform, move it from dev to test to prod, as the case may be, and move it along in that conjunction, and also automate, if you will, some of our testing capabilities as it were. So let's go back onto our, uh, into our code space instance. And one of the things you'll notice is when I've extracted the artifact, uh, or in this case, the app, and if I go to the Canvas app, I can also unpack it and actually see the actual screen that Sherry just built using Copilot. Oh, and by the way, I, I forgot to mention, that workflow that I was showing you before, that can also be used, you can also use Copilot to actually generate that workflow itself or being able to extract artifacts directly out of, uh, uh, out of uh, pardon me, out of uh, the dev environment as it were. So going forward in that context, now we'll go ahead and look at, uh, so you saw the actual file there. And here, as you can see, if I want to find out exactly what was the co-pilot effort here, I can scroll down, look at all the different containers, as the case may be. Now let's go check uh, where the de uh, deployment's standing. So let me go back over here and look at the action. And here it tells me that the deployment's already happened. So let's go look at that exactly, what's, what's happened here. So as you can see here, I've got, it's imported the solution. Now one thing I also want to know is that I don't want my QA team to go ahead and pull, create net new data, right? So what I've also gone ahead and done in my build process is actually imported all the data that came in from that Excel spreadsheet and put that directly into my QA environment so my QA team can get started right away, okay? So now let's go look into our QA environment here. So here in my QA environment, I have the Bank Support Tickets app, uh, tickets app and I'm gonna go into that particular solution. And when I see that, I see both the data table and the app showing up right here in my, in my uh, test environment as is. What I'm now gonna go do is actually share this with my QA team, because I wanna make sure only the right set of folks are actually working on this particular app. So I'll go ahead and share. And since I'm also the DevOps manager, I'm gonna go assign it to myself and the bug bash team. That's what we call our QA teams, all right? We call them bug bashers, all right? So I've assigned it to them. And what I'm now just gonna go do is play it up. So what you've now just witnessed is I've taken an artifact, or in this case, the app, the Copilot built app, from my dev environment, persisted that into my GitHub repository, and then deployed that directly into my QA environment, all right? All in one shot. And now my QA team can just go ahead and do that. So, I mean, wow. Like, how about the fact that we can actually take something from concept, go ahead and design it, build it, and then deploy it just like that. With that, Charles? Back to you. Thank you, Karthik. I think uh, a Power Platform demo with YAML files is probably one of my favorite ones out there right now. And uh, as we go look across those first two demos, what it's really showing is this idea of low code 
AI and developers being able to work together to produce something incredibly amazing and incredibly quickly. Like if you look at it, you start with Copilot to build the app, there's Copilot embedded in the application, you have visual design elements, but you still can get that source control and that CI CD. You don't have to compromise on it. And kind of this idea of all of these things coming together really is what is propelling, we think, the next wave of enterprise application development. We're going to see thousands or tens of thousands of apps and workflows in every large company and every small company, maybe not that many, but still a lot, um, being built on top of this type of tool chain. And the reason is because you can spend more time building logic and value and less time wiring things up. More time getting work done and less time, say, gathering requirements or experimenting with frameworks or design languages. And this idea lets us really stay focused on what we're trying to build or create. Because at the end of the day, I love technology. I think if you're at the build conference, you love technology, but you're building for a purpose. And this helps you get to that purpose a heck of a lot faster. Now, if we take a second and look deeper into the AI element, the Power Platform Copilot is a journey we've been on for a few years now. We launched the first Copilot capabilities back in 2021. And we did that actually at the Build Conference, which was virtual then, um, where we talked about this natural language to Power Apps FX expressions, as well as natural language to DAX. And that was built on top of GPT-3, not even 3.5 or 4. Uh, and we were able to get some really exciting usage and value out of, that, uh, out of that capability. Then last year, we launched a couple more capabilities, the big one being natural language to cloud flows in Power Automate. And then this year, in 2023, a whole bunch of great capabilities across every part of the Power Platform. Power Pages, Power Virtual Agent, Power Automate, Power Apps, Power BI a whole bunch of amazing AI capabilities to make it easier to get started and easier to build an app or solution exactly the way you want it. And kind of this transition, this idea of gradual co-pilot and then all at once a whole bunch of co-pilot has been our, our hope and dream for quite some time. And yesterday you, you kind of heard a lot of the references in the keynotes talking about this idea of, oh, it's not like we queued up a bunch of announcements for Copilot in January of this year, but it's something we've been working on. You kind of see the beginnings of all of those improvements and investments over the last couple of years. And the thing I'm most excited about is the value our customers and users get out of this. And the numbers show Copilot is game changing. Over 36,000 organizations are already using the Power Platform Copilot capabilities. This is a huge set of adoption and a huge set of early users that are getting value from AI as part of their normal Power Platform workflow. And it's this idea of mixing and matching low-code AI and devs to create amazing solutions that Power Platform has kind of evolved into. In the beginning, it was just low-code and devs, but now it's low-code AI and devs, so low-code co-pilot and uh, developer resources. So a lot of great capabilities there. Now, if we look at the co-pilot functionality, we have co-pilots for all parts of the Power Platform family now. And the area that we announced last November at Ignite was Power Automate co-pilot. And what's amazing about that as the first big co-pilot in the Power Platform is that it's allowed Power Automate users to build workflows 50% faster and with 70% less errors. It's rare where you get a faster and better combo in a V1. And that's why we've been so excited and furiously paddling to build all the different Power Platform co-pilots over the last six months or so. And at Build, the big news has been the Power BI and Power Pages co-pilots to really round it out. So just like how you can get used to that visual design, that expression, you know, the Excel and PowerPoint had a baby Power Platform type experience, you can now get used to that co-pilot in Power Platform experience. Because if you're looking for an option or a button or a setting, it'll be there just right on the right-hand side. You can find it by talking to AI. Really a whole new way of building solutions. So for this next demo, we're going to be looking at Power Pages Copilot in more depth. And for folks that haven't used Power Pages before, it's the easiest way to get a business website stood up with security, with a data backend, with workflows and applications that employees can use. And Copilot makes it so you can generate content, design forms, style your experiences, and build entire websites using natural language. And all of this is built inside that beautiful visual designer you already know and love from Power Pages. 
And just like all the other stuff, it's really best seen in action. So for this next one, I'm going to invite Bobby on the stage, and he's really going to show us how you can use PowerPages Copilot to build amazing solutions faster than ever. Bobby, take it away. Thanks, Charles. So hi, everyone. So today I'm going to show you how I can use Copilot to update a website that I built using Power Pages. Um, and as Charles mentioned, it's our business application development platform. Um, and I'm going to use this example of Woodgrove Bank. Now, Woodgrove Bank are in the process of rolling out a new student loans program, and uh, they want to uh, update their website with a brand new page, and they want to reach out to new customers. So let's start right here in our low-code design studio. And over here on the right, we've added a Copilot window where Copilot is always available and ready to assist me. So I'm going to zoom in for you guys and just ask Copilot to create a product page for a student loan page for application. OK? Now, while this is often being busy in the background, let me explain what's going on. So as a Power Pages developer, I've always had the option to use HTML and CSS and use the embedded VS Code experience to start my coding, or I could have used the low-code WYSIWYG Design Studio like you can see here. And now that we've added Copilot, I can do the same things and get the same results. So we're querying the language model here to find me a layout that suits my scenario. Now, when this completes and returns, what you will see that it will return HTML and CSS tailored for my scenario. It will be fully responsive and it will be accessible. And whilst this is generative AI, you will still be able to update all of this markup and CSS using the embedded VS Code experience. And now finally, Power Pages will automatically add uh, context-relevant images to my scenario, which you can also change at a later point. So here we go. As you saw, it returned pretty quickly. That is a page that created purely using Copilot. Thank you. OK, so now um, I want to add some text to this page. I actually want to make it a little bit more informative to the, to, the, to the users who are arriving, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a text component. And now we have a new Copilot option. And if I click that, we get this in-context Copilot experience. Now, I'm a dev, and this is where I would usually have a creative block if someone came to me and said, hey, just add some text to make the page more better. So I would normally grab Laura Mipson, right? That's kind of getting a bit uh, long in the tooth. So I'm going to ask Copilot to assist me here. So I'm going to ask Copilot to give me an overview of student loans offered by Woodgrove Bank. OK, so again, we're off querying the language model with my scenario, and it's going to return me something immediately, which is some suggested text which I could go add here. Now, below the suggestion returned, I have some options. I can choose to rewrite. I can choose to adjust the length, make it shorter, make it longer. But for this one, I'm actually going to change the tone. So I want to actually make it a little bit more professional. So again, we're going to apply that context to the language query. And here you'll see immediately you return something which a little bit more professional. I like this now, so I'm going to add it to my page. I simply just click here, and here it is in my page. OK. So now the next thing I want to do with this page is actually add a form so I can capture my applicant's details. So again, I'm going to add a new component, which is a form component. So here I select form. Now, again, we have this brand new in-context co-pilot uh, window. I, here's where I can just use natural language to describe the form that I want. So this time, I'm going to ask Copilot to create me a student loan application form. OK. Now, in the background, well, traditionally, when we build forms, it's quite a lengthy process. We have to do some research, we do some design work, and we do a lot of data modeling, largely before we reach the engineering stage. This is doing it all for you. It's doing your research, it's doing your modeling, it's doing everything, and it will return you a form suitable for your scenario. So over here on the right, you'll see the preview of the form that Copilot has generated, including some sample data. If, I like, if I'm not too happy with this form, I want to make some changes, I can go over, over here to the left, and Copilot has returned me some suggestions. I could choose to use those and um, modify my form um, right here in this, in this uh, experience. I'm actually quite happy with this. So I'm just going to just say, OK. And what this is going to do is uh, add this to my page. Now, in the background, as you know, creating HTML forms 
isn't actually a, a, a difficult process, but it can take some time. But actually connecting HTML forms to secure data stores is actually a lengthy process. Lots of workflow, lots of clicks, et cetera. What we are doing, we're doing all of that work for you. So right now in the background, what's happening is we are actually creating all of your Dataverse assets and entities and your system forms, as well as updating your pages site with the uh, form that you will see in the design studio, as well as the end user experience. Now, this can take a couple of minutes, so I'm going to jump to one um, that I created just before I came out here, so you guys can see the end result. And so when that dialogue returns, you will see a form that looks like this. Now, this is fully connected to Dataverse at this point, and in theory, it's ready to ship. But it looks quite plain. And I think if I was to speak to my design team, they would say, hey, Bob, is there something you can do here that would make this look better? So, yes, there is. And Copilot can help with that. So I'm going to go over here back to our right pane Copilot experience and ask Copilot to generate CSS for this form. All right. What this is doing is it's looking at that form and extracting the CSS classes for you, and it will allow me to edit those using the embedded VS Code experience. And immediately, as you see on the right, Copilot returns and says, hey, you're ready to edit the code. How do I do this? Well, I can use the edit code option now for this page. Now, this will launch the embedded VS Code experience. I love this because these are the same toolings that I use on my desktop. Um, but right, I'm, just, I'm right here in the browser doing exactly the same thing I would do every day. And here you're seeing the markup that Copilot returned for you. What I'm actually interested in is the CSS. So here are the CSS uh, classes that Copilot generate for you, ready for you to fill in. Of course, I have created some styles earlier that I'm just going to grab and paste right in here like that. And I would need to save this file. And I will need to go back to the studio. And here I'm going to press sync. Now, what's happening here is we are updating the data store with all of my CSS content. And we're updating the design studio, so I'm ready to see this in my preview window, too. And here we return with my updated form with all the styles I just put in. OK, thank you very much. Thanks, Bobby. Appreciate it. And I think uh, for folks that don't know, Bobby also is an engineering leader. So his team builds all the stuff, and they also can demo it. So super amazing work in a very short period of time. And what that demo really highlights, which I get excited about, is that continuous progression from co-pilot, natural language, to low code, visual designers, to pro code, and the ability to actually drop into VS Code and change CSS, HTML, JavaScript, and more. And that kind of broad spectrum is why you can really get going fast and not have to surrender control. So we really view this as a combination of lots of different things coming together, all aimed with making websites, making apps, understanding your data, automating tasks easier than ever before. Now, we've seen a lot about Copilot and the Power Platform, but I do want to kind of do one reminder, which is generative AI is not just about Copilots. It's also about how you can use it in your solutions to summarize text, classify text, generate exciting images, and even in the future, audio and video. It also shows up throughout all of the solutions that you build. So inside of your Power App, you can call the OpenAI endpoint on text or generating text. Additionally, inside of Power Automate, you can have your workflow call out to OpenAI using AI Builder to analyze the text the same way. Or in Power Automate Desktop, if you're building a robotic process automation or RPA, you can also use OpenAI. Or in Power Pages, if you're building content or creating workflows there, you can do all of that with OpenAI as well. Or even in Dataverse, if you want to make your columns and tables smarter and richer, you can also mix in OpenAI. And last but not least, Power Virtual Agent. And I know that is a lot. I tried to fit it in a very short period of time. But there is just a lot of ways where the solutions you build could be more intelligent and more capable and more robust because you are able to call the open AI models and use them inside the Power Platform. And that's the idea. It changes how we build, but also changes what we build. Now, a couple months ago, we announced an example of this, something called generative answers. It makes it easy for you to create a Power Virtual Agent chatbot or conversation experience from your existing content and data assets. 
files, SharePoint sites, web pages, and more. You just upload all of it, and then we figure out how to pair it with the large language model to give you a chat GPT-like experience built on your data. And this is something you can do in just a matter of minutes. And this has been a really great example of how changing what you build is going to fundamentally happen because of these large language models and foundation models. And one of the great examples out there is with HP. HP is one of the largest Power Virtual Agent users in the world. And they use Power Virtual Agent to respond to customer queries and questions and support requests in an automated way. And they've been able to go experiment with generative answers inside of that chatbot to expand the set of topics they have. Because normally when you build a chatbot, you have to drag and drop every single dialogue flow, every single topic. But with generative answers, you can get an infinite number of topics and answers based on your existing content. And it's all your data and your information, never shared and never reused to train the model. And what HP has said is really this is the beginning of a bigger journey to explore the potential of GBT and other large language models. But the most exciting part of this to me is the fact that it's happening now. This AI revolution, this platform shift that Satya talked about yesterday, it's not something that's six months from now, two years from now. It's something happening right now. Companies, big and small, are already taking these capabilities and applying them in production to get value, to do interesting and disruptive things. And at Build, we took generative answers to the next level, something called generative actions. And I'm a little bit biased, but I would say this is my favorite announcement at Build this year. Because what it lets you do is it lets you take connectors and plugins and actions that you build to your internal systems and register them with Power Virtual Agent. And then the generative AI will actually figure out parameter collection and when to execute those actions to satisfy requests and replies. So if you want your own ChatGPT plus plugins or Microsoft 365 Copilot plus plugins experience, if you want to build out for yourself, you can do it with Power Virtual Agent in just a couple of weeks. And instead of having just read-only content or only 100 hard-coded topics and dialogues, you can have thousands or millions of potential dialogues and topics and answers. It's really a game-changing set of capabilities. And one of the best ways to always look at something like this is how it's being applied today. Like I said, it's happening now. The revolution is now. So Holland America Line is a cruise, com a cruise ship company, and they su support hundreds of thousands of requests every single month on their customer service channel. And every request costs about eight or 10 bucks. So that's the cost of a person picking up the phone and answering. And they're looking at using generative actions and generative answers to have Power Virtual Agent satisfying self-service requests and questions for pennies per request. So it's an always available contact center, always able to take actions for the users and able to deliver a wonderful experience. And this is something that I can't wait to invite Kendra on stage to go through and show what's possible, what they've built, and even more importantly, how they built it. Take it away, Kendra. Thank you so much, Charles. Hey, everyone. Bots typically do two things, answer questions and complete tasks for their users. And I am so excited to show you how with generative AI and power virtual agents, we can enable them to do both without manually authoring a single conversation, which can result in some pretty amazing bot experiences like this one. Roll the tape. <laughs> we'll jump ahead. We were going to show you the cake, and then we were going to show you how we were going to make the cake. But we're just going to wait until to unveil the cake till the very end. So we're going to jump ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and show you just how easily it is to get started building the bots that Charles spoke about with generative answers. So from right here within the AI capabilities page, I can easily point my bot to a number of different knowledge sources, such as the Holland America website or other internal proprietary knowledge sources like Agent Manual or SharePoint. 
I can also control how the bot behaves within the advanced AI configuration settings. And with just a few clicks, my bot is immediately able to have rich conversations over these data sources. So this will be my first cruise, and I'm not really sure which travel documents I need to bring with me. And just like that, I'm able to see exactly which documents I need to board the cruise, as well as some helpful links to where I can find this information on the website. Better yet though, these conversations can now have multiple turns while maintaining the conversation context. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and publish this bot to my website or a number of other channels such as Facebook or Teams. We know though that simply providing information is not enough when our customers are coming to our bots for help. We also need to be able to take action on their behalf. For example, retrieving a reservation status by calling a backend API. Now, typically, you would need to build every single one of these topics within Power Virtual Agents, state of the art, low code authoring canvas, which just went GA yesterday. Uh, and this is assisted with Copilot, of course. But with the new GPT powered conversation engine, this process can be entirely transformed. Your bot now has a library of different plugins that function like Lego blocks that it can self-assemble in order to fulfill the user's request. And where any required information is missing, it can actually generate the question to gather this from the customer. These plugins include enterprise APIs, or any of the thousands of pre-built Power Platform connectors. They include Power Automate flows, and of course, bot topics. So if you have actually built a bot, and you're sitting in the audience right now, and you have spent months and months testing and refining and iterating and testing again and writing lines and lines of code, I know that this sounds like a fairy tale, but it's not, and I'm gonna show you. So remember, all I've done is point my bot to a couple of Holland America APIs and added one pre-built weather connector. I have built no manual topics by hand. Now, in order to get started testing, so you can see this in action, I'm gonna go ahead and open up our new tracing mode so you can see these plugins automatically chain together in real time and follow the conversation in the test chat on the left. Now, I'm curious, what last minute cruise options are available to the Bahamas next week and what's the weather there like right now? I'm a habitual overpacker, so I'm really hoping this can help me. Sometimes hitting enter is the hardest part of these demos. <laughs> and just like that, GPT is able to parse my request and understand that it can fulfill it with the combination of a call to a reservation system with a custom connector action plugin and a pre-built weather connector plugin. And again, throughout this, thank you, thank you. I was gonna signal the applause later, but I love the enthusiasm. So yes, yes, keep it, keep it going. It only gets better. Along the way, you're able to follow the system's thoughts and observations to understand how the large language model decided what to do next. Now, the bot was able to identify the input for destination and time were fulfilled and return the weather portion of the question here. Remember, I built no what is the weather topic, right? It also recognized that the uh, departure port uh, required input for the to be able to return the cruise options is missing and actually generated that question to gather the information from me. So I think I'll depart from Miami. And amazingly, it extracted the entity Miami 
to fill the missing input slot and execute the call to the reservation system to provide last minute cruises from Miami to the Bahamas next week. This is where you apply. Now that was pretty awesome, but I don't know about you. This Rotterdam ship or cruise looks pretty freaking in pretty incredible. And I am really excited to learn about what cabin options they have available. Again, GPT parses my request and understands that it can fulfill it with another custom connector action plugin and automatically chains it up to continue the conversation to return for me the cabin options for the Rotterdam cruise. All we did was give our bot access to a set of existing APIs and plugins. We built no manual topics by hand. The bot was able to self-assemble and chain together a combination of actions and APIs in order to fulfill the request. And where any information was missing, it actually generated the questions to gather that information from me. Between this and chatting over company-specific information, we know this is going to revolutionize bot building as we know it. As for me, though, I'm off to the Bahamas. Back to you, Charles. Thank you, Kendra. And, and as you can see, really, bot building is never going to be the same. I, I've been in conversational AI and chat experiences for a while now, and this is the biggest shift we've ever seen in the last 20 years, really since this even became a concept in the space people wanted to build things. So I know it's been a lot of content in the last 45 minutes. So just a very quick recap. Amazing Power Apps co-pilot capabilities from data and inside of the Power Apps that you build. Amazing CI, CD, and pro dev integration so you don't have to give up on the software development lifecycle if you use the Power Platform. Power Pages Copilot, so you can build websites that are AI powered and AI enabled in minutes. And Power Virtual Agent, to create your own chat GPT on your own data, on your own actions, and your own plugins. And as developers, I know we all like to build, so if you want to get started, go to aka.ms slash low code and start creating solutions. And if you want to learn more, we've had over 15 sessions at Build this year about the Power Platform. You can check them out on demand, stop by our booth, or just join the other sessions that are still left. And if that's still not enough, and you want to get even more Power Platform conference or content, we have the Power Platform conference coming this fall. It's a conference 100% dedicated to the Power Platform. 8,000 of your closest Power Platform friends, and we're going to have hundreds of sessions from beginner to expert, all in one place in an action-packed three days. So. With that, we're out of time, so I want to say thank you. So thank you for sticking through uh, the session. Thank you for being the best community in tech, and thank you for letting me talk about co-pilots for another 45 minutes. Have a great rest of build. See everybody around.